Good evening. My name is Dorian Lewis, and I will be your moderator for this evening's lecture. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain foreign countries. The Southfield branch was established in the year 1997. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the president of the Southfield branch, Dr. Marvin Lewis, and the vice president, Dr. Edward Ewell, and also the superintendent is Dr. Jarrell Lewis. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, as they are contained in the original Hebrew texts. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> Excuse me. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true name of our heavenly father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. Therefore, the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. 
It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of the most holy place, the holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And 10th, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. And at this time, we will have a prayer given by Dr. Harold Wade Jr. And uh, we will have, I will give the scripture after the prayer. Uh, Harold, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father Yahweh, for allowing us to come together and to learn more of you as you really are and actually exist. And we hope that you impart through the speakers the knowledge of your salvation that's been given through the ages and the dispensation and is given out now that we all may partake. And as these blessings and all other blessings in the name of your dear son, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. Good afternoon, class. I'll be reading the scripture from the Holy Name version of the Bible containing the original and true names of the Creator and His Son, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association, and post-copyright reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. It's Romans, the seventh chapter. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye, are, are, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth 
fruit unto Yahweh. For when we were in the flesh, the passions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, being dead to that wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? By no means. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For within the law, sin was dead. With, for without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? By no means, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold unto sin. For that which I do, I know not why. For what I would, that I do not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will to do good is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now I, I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to Yahweh, I have deliverance through Yahshua the Messiah, our savior. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh, while my flesh is subject to the law of sin. Chapter eight. Therefore is no more, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of the life in Yahshua the Messiah hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, because of sin, to condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the eternal mind is at enmity, I'm sorry, because the carnal mind is at enmity against Yahweh. For it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can it be. So then they are in the flesh, they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yahweh dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. And if the Messiah it be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him 
that raised up Yahshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Yahshua from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I've read Romans the seventh chapter and the eighth chapter from one to 11. Thank you, Dr. Dominguez and Dr. Lewis for prayer and scripture. Uh, we also like to acknowledge some visiting brethren. Uh, we have Dr. David Underwood and Dr. Graciela Underwood from Lansing. And we also have, I'm sorry, Dr. Janine Whitfield from our Detroit branch. We thank you guys for joining us and uh, we thank you. <laughs> and for our first speaker, it is a pleasure to call on Dr. Carl Leatherberry. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, for some reason, I kind of knew I was late. Um, I think I, you know, I just anything that I have to say or anything that I learn about my Creator, about Yahshua, about Yahweh, I have to give all thanks to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. Um. It has been a lot of things on my heart and mind, like throughout this thing and this pandemic that's been going on and, you know, the situation, you know, me and my wife is in, it's a little more serious than it could be, you know, with a lot of other people. So, you know, with this saying that, you know, I've been missing class, not too much, but I've been missing class enough. It's been a lot on my heart and mind of certain things on all you know, that's physically going on that um, I'm thankful to Yasha that he not allowed me to like pay attention to these things. Um, I did, uh, Maurice, he posed a question about, you know, uh, death, about where do we go when we die? And I did want to have a discussion with the class about that, but uh, we can use like, if we can use the end of the class session to discuss, you know, he wanted to know, you know, where uh, where do we go after we die or will we be conscious of when we die? So I just wanted to pose that and see if we can discuss it and some of the class members maybe can, you know, help out with that question. But <clears throat> um, the strip selection is, that, that really kind of touched me being that I haven't spoken in a minute and you know, I want to go back to the scripture lesson. So can we go back to the scripture lesson um, real quick? And we can start at the beginning. It's Romans 7 and 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. And, and okay, my understanding of coming to class and like I said, I'm thankful to Yashka. Anything that he have to say through me, may it be him that do the talking. But the back in, um, we all know that uh, Moses at the, uh, at the burning bush, he was given the name of, uh, Yashua gave him the name to go down to Egypt <clears throat> and to free his uh his sons from Egypt. Now Moses he he did is what Yahweh wanted him to do. And when it, the children of Israel got out into the wilderness, they was given three days to uh, to get their stuff together and to meet at the mount. And which it shows on the picture here if you, uh, if you got the chart up, if everybody got the chart up. But um, Yahshua has spoke the law down to the children of Israel. And they said that all that Yahshua would say that we would do. And that law, that's, that's, that's kind of what I want to talk about is that law. The, uh, that law was place there to point out something. Uh, I think later on in the stress selection they say that the it say that the, the law wasn't bad. 
but it was the children of Israel, the dis the disobedience. See, the law was there to point out the sin that they were doing. See, they they used to they for one, they say that all the Yahshua would say that we would do. That they will and when they built that golden calf, it's like they they broke the law right there. So it's like being being kind of minded in the physical is that's where I don't know if I can say this, but that's that's kind of where we fall short if we don't understand what Yahshua has done for us. Now, can we let's continue on with the uh, scripture lesson? Second verse. <clears throat> For the woman which has an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she should be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of the Messiah, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Right. But now we... Hey, I'm I'm sorry, but like what he said there about, you know, the sin, the sin was there. I mean, the law was put there to point out sin. Like they cannot keep that law, you know, and at that time, you know, Yahshua, he hasn't resurrected or the, the, the new covenant hasn't been set um, to where like the, the children of Israel understood that. To see, and nowadays it's, it's you know it's a lot of people that don't really understand that, and like I was talking to my wife, you know, uh, I think yesterday and earlier today about um, my daughter's family. They are like they they Israelites, and and it's it's just funny how this that that this came up is. Um, you know, they feel like that they are the true Hebrews. They are the, that, that Black people are true, um, the original and true Hebrews, you know. Not, okay, I don't know how to put this, but it's the way that they, that they use the Bible and the way that they use, they use like the Holy Quran and stuff like that to almost like it's the same as church. They still imputing, they still going about these laws. These laws that that were given to the children of Israel at that time. See, at that, that, that was long ago in that, let's say back in those times that when Yahweh had gave them that law like I said, because at that time, see, Yahshua having risen, they didn't know about having a savior. And I kind of sound like I'm kind of beating this up a little bit, but let's let's continue on in the uh, spirit selection and see if I can really hit a good point. Six verse. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Yahweh forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, Rotten me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. 
For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good make death unto me? Yahweh forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, Dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Yes, and I see he, I mean, and he's saying it to you. Uh, well, being in this class is what helped me understand what he's saying. And he's not saying that the law was, was, was bad. He's saying, you know, like I was saying, the law was put there to, to point out the sin. To that, if you wasn't following that law, that you were you were sinning, and uh, that tabernacle pattern that they had them build out there in the wilderness. When, uh, can we pull that tabernacle pattern out? In, in a tabernacle pattern, she had the court round about the holy place and the most holy place. Now, down in the court round about, right down there where, where the gate is, they say, you see that? It's an altar, an altar of sin and sacrifice. And when the children of Israel broke that law, they had to bring a sacrifice to that altar to basically atone for their sins. They they brought an offering to die in place of them die. So that offering basically took upon their sins. And that altar burnt continuously, just constantly. And they 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 sacrificed, they, I mean, they they brought offerings daily because they kept breaking the law. They kept they, I mean, they used to keep law the law written like on their on their their garments and their clothes and things like that like this is it wasn't just the 10 laws it was it was like 600 and some laws that they that they had to keep and see the law like i said the law was put there to point out sin um now can we continue with the spiritual lesson 18th verse for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, O oh, wretched man that I am, like who shall deliver me? Who who should deliver you from that? state you know um and like i said back back when the children of israel was in the wilderness see at that time the messiah wasn't there you know and it was yahweh that had gave them that law so now you know we want to see okay there was there was i think in the first covenant but then there was a law in the second covenant um, I don't want to go too far ahead of myself, but let, let's continue reading. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank, <clears throat> I thank Yahweh through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Savior, 
So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation yes. to them which yes. are in Yahshua the Messiah. Yes, therefore now there is no condemnation. You know, in Yahshua the Messiah, there's no condemnation. There, um, I, I don't know, uh, spirit law. Um, maybe I can kind of leave that for somebody else, but that's kind of where we're going. I, this was there was the old covenant and then there was the new covenant. And um, can we can we just get the scriptures be, uh, about the the old and the new covenant? Let's get that and let's see what this helps. Anybody know where? Yes, yeah, uh, Felicia Jeremiah thirty one thirty one. Jeremiah thirty one thirty one. Yes. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I had it as Hebrews eight, but let me get oh, Jeremiah. Go ahead. Let's see. Um, I'll try Hebrews eight and then get Jeremiah. Okay. Um, yes. Hebrews eight and eight thirteen. And that he said, a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. Mm -hmm. so let me try Jeremiah. That's that was the end of that old That uh, he made with the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Let me let me go to Jeremiah 31. Dr. Lewis was right. Let me try that, Carl. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. And see, that's where, okay, he, like he said, you heard it there, he, that mm -hmm. in the days that he took them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. when he took them out of the land of Egypt, and like I was talking about when he was in the wilderness, they were under that law. Mm -hmm. And that law was put there to point out the sin. So um, go ahead, continue with mm -hmm. that uh -huh. which my covenant they break, although mm -hmm. I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Hold on, before you go there, and you mm -hmm. say, he say, which the covenant they break is mm -hmm. with, uh, you see how they were talking in this scripture lesson about the, see, Yahweh, that's, that is the true husband. And see, we are the bride. And when they was at the, the mount, and when he spoke that law down to him, they say all oh, that Yahweh say we would do. They married Yahweh at that mount at that time. So, you know, and like I said, they didn't have an understanding back then as, you know, that we have now, like, um, you know, being in this class and the, the vision that Dr. Kinley had from Yahshua, from Yahweh himself, is it's revealing these things so that we can understand them now in the present day. Um, like, uh, like I was, you know, still want to kind of refer to, you know, uh, they the classes that they take my daughter to, and they, and they, I try to make sure that she know the truth of Yahweh. It's like you you have to know these things. Like these people. They're still teaching that old law. They're saying that these things are what you still have to do in order to make it into heaven, which that is just, it's not true, people. It's not true. Um, like she said in Jeremiah 31 31, the things that wax old, can we read that again? Start right there. Yep. I'll start back at 31. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and we and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Now, that's, now let's read that again for people mm -hmm. who didn't hear that. Just mm -hmm. that part right there. We okay. want to know what that new covenant is. What, mm -hmm. 
what's going on here. Mm -hmm. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts. He said, I will put my law in their inward parts. And write it in their hearts. And write it in their hearts. And will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Okay, can we pull up the chart? Um, um, which chart is the, uh, the Old and New Testament chart? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Covenants, yeah. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, okay, see that heart up there? And then on the other side, okay, you got the Old Testament is fulfilled. That was fulfilled by Joshua the Messiah. See, all those old laws, that old covenant, that, that was things that Yahweh, like I said, he put that there to point out the sin. And so he knew that the children of Israel couldn't keep it. Like he said, he was a husband to them. He, he provided for them everything. Like, I mean, you, you taking the, the physical to understand the spirit. And it's, it's like, we take, we do, we take care of each other in certain ways. You, if a, if a, a wife is married to her husband and she's, he's hungry, she's going to feed him. You know, if he needs something, like she, she steps in to help with providing those things, like physically to show, you know, what spiritually really is going on. And they, like I said, Yah Yahweh was a husband unto them. And that old law and that those old ordinances, like you say down there at the bottom, physical, physical sacrifices, all that was nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross. You see, if we can zoom in on that right there, where you see those nails right there, it was nailed to the cross because Joshua came in and he fulfilled those things to a jot and a tittle. And like, I mean, I don't want to get emotional with it, but, but when, if I'm able to teach my daughter that, if Yasha would give her just a, a little bit of understanding to where she come to me and can like tell me that, you know, I, I, I just have to say all praise, all things go to Yasha the Messiah. Because there's so many people out in this world that ain't listening. And it ain't just the fact that she's my daughter. She's around other people. She She's experiencing a lot of other things out here in this life. And it's not up to me whether I make her understand that. Yahshua have to make her understand that. That he came in and he fulfilled those laws. He That old covenant is not there. The new law is in the inward part. In your inward parts. Can we go back to the scripture lesson? Yes. <clears throat> uh, chapter eight. It's Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. who, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit after the spirit for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh yes, see that he sent his own son in the likeness of flesh to condemn sin in the flesh that that, that's kind of like, that's a whole nother lecture, but it, it's still into what we're talking about. You know, he was sent here for that purpose. For that purpose. Where Adam left off, Yahshua picked it up. Can we, can we go to the elementary chart? I'm going to just do this real quick. The first the first plate right there, the transgressions plate. See, in Adam, all men die. When they when Eve committed the sin in the garden, Adam and Eve was driven out of the garden. 
He said, in all and in Adam, all men die. Yahshua is the resurrection. That, let's go down the burial. What is that? The baptism? Uh, back up top. The uh baptism. I mean, these I I I want like uh if y'all if people don't know about like really know about these places, like if y'all go back into these places or into these stories that you know it, it'll pick you up to speed on what Yahshua is doing. He he came and Adam all man died. And Yahshua, he picked men up where Adam left off to bring us back into Yahshua uh, faultless, if I can say that like that. But he is, he was a true sacrifice. Like I said, those sacrifices that they used to put, and you can see that tabernacle pattern is right next to that plate where that altar at down there at the bottom. They used to put the sins on that altar every time that they sinned the children of Israel. And see, Yahshua Messiah right next to it, can see these plates do line up. He was the true sacrifice. And, okay, let's go back to the the scripture reading. And can we pull the other chart back up with um what's the name of this chart here? Uh, carnal carnal ornance. You can Cardinal Ornance chart. Okay, okay. The Cardinal Ornance chart. Okay. Let's, can we go back to uh, the eighth chapter, Roman? Yes, third verse. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes, and you see that to be carnally minded is death. And you see that's a carnal ordinance. Back in those days, that uh, the children of Israel they were carnal minded. It was like when you, when you're in the flesh, it's like we can only if 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 we can't. Uh, pick it up with our senses. These this little finite mind that we have, our fine senses, as far as taste, smell, touch, or hear it. It's like we don't. People they don't believe it, or they say they don't have to believe it. They don't, you know, actually see it themselves. Well, I say this, and a lot of people who's uh, preaching, and a lot of people who's teaching out here in these church churches and all these different like religions that are so wrong and uh, you know I, I have to say it like that that are so wrong you know how you know would they say well this is the things that we, we still need to be doing water baptism we still need to be doing the Passover or, you know we these ceremonies and all these different you know laws in which, you know, it's said in the same exact Bible that they have in Jeremiah in the in those days. In what days? Those days of old. We're, we're not back in those days. They It's like, I don't know what's going on. It's, it's hard to teach somebody about the new covenant or what's really about the new covenant because a lot of them close their mind or close their ears to it, but it's being said over here in Romans in chapter eight, it's like when they they can't put these things together. And it's through this vision and revelation that the founder of this class, Dr. Kinley, had that put this out here for us. He put it out here for all of us. It's uh, anybody can obtain eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. Can we continue? with the scripture lesson yes <clears throat> seventh verse because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh neither indeed can be 
the eternal mind is at enmity with Yahweh. Can we look up the word enmity? That's what I was like. You might not have heard it. I know people who've probably heard it, but let's let's get that and see what a, a carnal mind is enmity. So if you have a carnal mind and this is what it is. Um, I have one definition. This is from Merriam Webster um, Dictionary Online. Positive, active, and typically mutual hatred or ill will. Mutual hatred or ill will. These, the certain things, a lot of things that people can't understand now here in this world. When you hear them type of words, those are words that they understand. Ill will, hatred, mm -hmm. you know. To have uh, the a common mind is at this enmity with mm -hmm. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it hates Yahweh. It's not of Yahweh. It, 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 it doesn't want to hear it. It doesn't perceive it. It don't care. It don't, you know, just go so forth and so on on those things. It's, it's just like it's cut off. Mm -hmm. But to be spiritually minded, what let's let's see what it said to be spiritually minded. Let's continue with that spiritual lesson. Oh, okay. Eighth verse. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yahweh dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. And if the Messiah be in you, then the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Yahshua from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. By his spirit that dwelleth in you. That spirit is the life. That's that is the life you have. Like you said, a carnal mind is, is it, uh, basically a carnal mind is, is, is like a, it's physical. It's physical, and you, right now it's like you have to you have to have that spiritual mind. You have to have it in your heart and mind that Yahshua came in and did what he did. Died the death of an outcast dog for our sins. That law has to be in, imputed in you. In you. Not, it's not in the book. It's not things that we read of oh, it's things that they they were recorded. They were recorded for our for for our emanation. Like that's Kelly, I heard. You know, it's been said through transcripts. They said, learn now, you can't learn now. Learn it now. And you see, let's circle that again. It says, the New Testament written in the heart or mind. That's your New Testament. That's, the, that's your New Covenant. That is written in the heart and the mind. It's, just, it's a spiritual law. See how it says down there at the bottom, it say. Law of the spirit. Let's circle that. Law of spirit. Yahshua came in, nailed those cardinal ordinances to the cross. He fulfilled them. To fulfill something means to end it, to complete it. He completed it. Now that new covenant is in our heart and in our minds, folks. We have. We have to worship Yahshua in spirit and in truth. That's where the law is. Let's finish up on the spiritual lesson. Twelfth verse. Now the Lord is spirit, and the but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. 
and if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh and joint heirs with the Messiah. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of Yahweh. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which off, excuse me, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Yes, and I was, that kind of goes back to like the first question that I posed, because like I said, all these things be on my mind about uh, what my brother-in-law proposed about death and do we be constant, conscious of it or, you know, he had this question and see, and I had, you know, we were born in the physical, but we have to be reborn in the spirit. And see, and, and hearing that, what she's reading over here in Rome, I mean, that it, it's so touching because that is letting you know that that spirit have to be born in you. Like you have to have that spirit of Yahshua in you. That is the true life. That's the life. Because being in this kind of world, we, we, it's like we're subject to that thing. There's nothing you can do about that. It's there. It's, it, it, it's around you constantly. You know, and you have to have that spirit of Yahshua in you. That spirit of Yahshua in you, which will help you overcome all this carnal thinking and this carnal mind that's going on out here. And, you know, it's just, it's chaos going on in this world, folks. And the only real Peace is in Yahshua the Messiah, which is truly your savior. He's he was the only one that can save you. That is the real law, the spirit law that they we're talking about in which the law, the old law, the old covenant, and then you got the new covenant, which is in their heart and mind. So I just hope somebody got that something out of that. Um, because that that's the scripture lessons, I feel that any class, any class that I ever visited, any class that I ever been to in the IDMR, when they choose those scripture lessons, those scripture lessons are like, they like tone setters. They, it's like almost things that there's probably been on so many student mind, you know, that they want to talk about. And, and you know, it's, it's so much to talk about. But when you got those scripture lessons to set that type of tone and all the things that's been on my heart and mind as for, you know, Dr. Marvin Lewis and, you know, the Southfield class to come and just put that out there. I feel like that is so touching. I feel like Yahshua is really talking through me. He threw the brother in. He used the vessels as he wanted to use the vessels because it is him that is actually doing the teaching. It's him that actually... And all these things are on my heart and mind, and it's take Yahshua to answer them. So to, to all the brethren, you stay steadfast in the gospel. Know that you are in the truth. That when it's the truth to, to the point where can nobody deny what's being said, or can nobody deny how Yahshua is doing this thing? then they shouldn't have anything to say against Yahshua or anything bad. Or if they do, then I'm have, it's Yahshua in me that's discerning what's being said, which is what's, what's of him and is which what's of that negative spirit. But to all the brethren, I love all of y'all. And it's, it's, it's through y'all support. It's through y'all being a brethren in Yahshua. Like Dr. Kenley said in one of the, um, I'm sorry from rambling, but he was saying in this in um, a transcript. He said in this class, in the body of Yahshua, we got all types of brethren. You know, you got 
are different type of brethren from different fields and different, you know, different walks of life that makes up the body of Yahshua the Messiah. So we got it all. We got everything we need because he's given it to us. And with those few words, I'd say hallelujah. Thank Dr. You, Dr. Dr. Leatherberry, mm -hmm. I ask a question before you get off. Uh, give us one second. We're going to actually have someone going to his question. Okay. okay. All right. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to offer uh, Dr. Janine Whitfield a chance to go on to Dr. Leatherberry's question. If uh, Dr. Leatherberry, you would please restate your question first. And then uh, Dr. Whitfield, if you have anything to offer on that, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Um, the question was, was brought up from my brother in law, uh, like, where do we go after we die? Um, he wanted to know did, will we be conscious of us being, being dead? And like, where do we go after we die? Okay, is that my cue? Hey, yes, you can start. Okay, I'll do my best. I'll take a um, couple minutes. Um, if we can do this, I'd like um, someone to perhaps use their phone and to put uh, under scriptures, sleep. And I wanna start in Samuel because that's perhaps the best definition. If you notice when we're um, reading the scriptures, uh, throughout history, what we find is that Yahweh will say, uh, or the, the prophets would say, and he slept with his fathers, and he slept with his fathers. So we know also, and I want sleep, the definition of sleep looked up. We know that sleep is the closest experience to physical death. The difference is, is that Yahweh's spirit is still beating our heart and is still uh, inhaling and exhaling. So the spirit is still in us, but we're in a dormant state as far as our physical body is concerned. This is really important, but understand that there's things happening even in that unconscious state when we experience dreams and things like that. But I, I want to get first Samuel where Saul goes to this diviner and asks that she bring back Samuel from the dead. And I want you to hear what he says. Does anybody know where that scripture is first? Yes, I think uh, Dr. Lewis gave it to me. So it's... Uh... That second Samuel seven and two, Lauren. Second Samuel five seven and twelve. Try seven and twelve. Well, okay. Second Samuel I'm seven sorry, and twelve. Let's see if this is it, Doctor Whitfield. Okay. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Is that what you want it? No, that's not it. Is it, it is when try, try Samuel 28 and maybe start first with one. or second. Oh, I'm sorry, first Samuel. Okay, first Samuel 28 and one. Yeah, just start All one. All right, okay. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. And Ashia said unto David, Know thou surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. And David said to Ashish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Ashish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of my head forever. I'm sorry, you can go down to six. No, that's fine. I want, I want her to keep reading because this is setting up a train of thought. Just kind of, you know. Find out why it is that Saul is trying to speak to Samuel. Go ahead and read. Okay, third verse. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had laminated him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. 
Okay, now pause for just a second. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to understand that there are uh, those people that have the power to look into these things. We were told about this once before. They are not of Yahweh, but they have been given a certain amount of power. And so this is what we're getting ready to experience with one of these wizards. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. Fourth verse. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shinnom and Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gobiah. And when, Saul, and when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. Okay, now see, by this time, Yahweh had taken his spirit from Saul and put an evil spirit in him. Mm -hmm. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So we want to just always keep in mind that Yahweh is always running the show, whether it's on this side or that side. Read. Mm -hmm. Six verse. And when Saul inquired of Yahweh, and when, excuse me, and when Saul inquired of Elohim, Yahweh answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by ermin, nor by prophets. Mm -hmm. Then said Saul unto his servants, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit. Okay, so seek me a woman mm -hmm. that hath a, a familiar spirit, read. Mm -hmm. That I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring him up, bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, behold, thou knowest what Saul have done, how he have cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Okay, so now I just want to establish that these are the people up to date would be the fortune tellers and those that read the tarot cards and things like that, that, that Yahweh has allowed them or the satanic spirit some power. So go ahead and read. Uh -huh. Wherefore then, wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swear to her by Yahweh saying, as Yahweh liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul saying, why hast thou deceived me? For thou she, art Saul. She's mm -hmm. afraid because remember that all of the wizards and stuff were, you know, were, were put out or have been. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. 13 verse. Mm -hmm. And the king said unto her, be not afraid for what, for what sayest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Pause. Now this is the scripture that I want you to read slowly and okay. carefully. And hopefully the, um, uh, brother Carl pay attention to this. This is important, read. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered. Now that's enough. We don't have to read because we don't need to need read this, um, okay. the the uh, mm -hmm. reasons why it goes into something else. But what I'm trying to show is that when we take off the flesh, this is very important. We take off the flesh. All scripture in the Bible points to the fact that our soul rests or that we sleep. Now, I certainly can't say what happens during that rest, but if you want to, to use the natural things to point up to the spiritual things, we know that when our soul is asleep or when our bodies with the soul in it is asleep, that we dream, but we're still in that restful state. So that is when you talk about where do we go? Well, the body has got to go back to the ground. We know that we have seen evidence of that. Either you've got to bury it or you've got to burn it up. So therefore what is left is what animates us. There are two, two parts now because we're body, 
we're soul and we're spirit. So now we're left with the soul and we're left with the spirit. And the soul is what lays to rest. Now we're looking at that being invisible because we no longer have the, the body on. So of course we can't you know, see that. But the best experience is our sleep. And that's the way Yahweh, we just read it, um, speaks through the prophets when it says he slept with his fathers. So think of it as a type of rest. Now I want to go over really quickly in Corinthians and I'll, I'll just really pass the baton to somebody else from this point. We'll go over to Corinthians where it talks about, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Because this is important too, because you know um, the creation as we know it from a physical perspective, we're in now supposedly 2021. And as I said the other um, day in class, is that according to the founder in transcripts and also on the ages and dispensations chart, he said that, the, that this age ended in 1960. So we're living now in what's known as the age of grace. And, but in the age of grace, if we count from 1960 to 2000 and now 21, we're talking about six, 60 years, now 61 years. But if you drop that zero, then you basically, and in prophetic time, we know we're looking at six days or six days of creation. See, it's on here very, uh, you can use that little red thing and show that 1960 right here. So that's where the creation, because the flesh is out. The previous speaker talked about that and the scriptures talks about the flesh. We're not living after the flesh. Now we're living after the spirit. So the creation, six days, one year in prophetic time, we're in that sixth day. And in the sixth day, the children of Israel, they gathered a double portion. And so when we look at where we are now in the creation, we can see from a spiritual perspective that Yahweh is pouring out the information, the knowledge, just like just it's just in double it's 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 on steroids <laughs> if I can say it that way the information that he is allowing us to to see and understand now what the children of Israel could not understand because they did not have the Holy Spirit they had the Holy Spirit with them but they did not have the Holy Spirit in them and that's what we're experiencing now with the Holy Spirit in us giving us um Yahweh gave us of his Holy Spirit. Because got to remember, Yahweh animates everything and everybody. See, and like I said, there's children of the day and children of the night. Now, some are destined for the lake of fire. That's just the fact that the, some are destined for the lake of fire. We ain't talking about nobody's burning in hell. We have to mm -hmm. understand that. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about physical flesh burning and never being consumed. And that, that was a vision to Moses. So what are we really talking about? We're talking about a soul. We're talking about a, in every time you breathe, you inhale. Think about that. Every time you breathe, inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. When the Messiah sent his men out, when he walked around on the face of the, the earth, he sent them out to cast demons out of the ground, Right? No, he sent them. He sent them to cast demons out of men. All right. Okay. He sent them out two by two to cast those devils out of men. Mm -hmm. So hell, this creation, belongs to Satan in terms of his dominance. He ain't created nothing. Let's be real clear now. Mm -hmm. This is all Yahweh's creation. But in terms of his dominance, he runs the show. So that's what we're coming out of her. We're coming out of Mother Whore. We're coming out of the principles and the doctrine, indoctrinations of a satanic kingdom. So now I haven't forgotten the scripture. I want to go over there to Corinthians real quick, where it talks about, behold, I show you a mystery. And I like to grab the chain of 
train of thought if we can. Yes, that is First Corinthians, and I'll start at I'll start at forty five. Okay, First Corinthians uh, one and well, yeah, um, fifteen. I'm sorry, uh, fifteen and forty. Uh, 15 and 35, I'm sorry. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Pause. Beautiful place to start, Lauren. Thank you so much. So how are the dead raised up? And with what, with what body do they come? Read. Keep reading, hon. Can y'all hear me? You're on mute, Lauren. Yeah, Lauren, Lauren you muted. Oh. <laughs> she, she's muted. Oh, she she's... maybe have. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. We can now. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I think my internet connection went. Uh, 36 voice, verse, excuse me. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And thou which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. Okay, pause for just a second. So we know just from a natural standpoint, we're talking still about where do we go? Where the body, you know, what happens to the body? And, mm -hmm. you know, once again, Yahweh has left us with no excuse. He's, now you take the natural things to understand the spiritual things. So when we put a seed in the ground, mm -hmm. we're not expecting that seed to resurrect the way it went down. As a matter of fact, that seed has to go through a death, being buried, and then it's going through changes once it's in the ground. It's shedding that, that skin, that first shell that's on it, and then there is newness of life, and it raises up in a much more glorious state. That's what we have to look forward to. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm, 38th verse. But Yahweh giveth a body as it has pleased him, yes. and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. So listen to this now. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Read. It is sown in dishonor. Yes. It is raised in glory. Mm -hmm. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Pause. Now, the previous speaker alluded to this to a degree. Now, keep in mind, again, Yahweh, our Elohim, creator of heaven and earth. And I say it that way specifically, Yahweh Elohim, because remember, Yahweh just simply took on shape and form as Elohim and sets, if I can put it this way, using words, took a seat. And through his son Elohim, Yahweh Elohim, we get the creation of heaven and earth, the angelic and the physical creation. So he's doing all the work himself. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is, <clears throat> excuse me, natural. Okay. And after that, pause, pause for a second, because I wanted to go back. I lost my train of thought for just a minute. So we know that Yahweh Elohim is our generator or our originator, mm. the original pattern of the universe. So then in Adam, the creation comes down, him being the degenerator, and in mm. Yahshua, the Messiah. And listen, this is important. This is pointed out the other day. It was only one man that brought the whole creation down and then Adam all died. We just read that, I think. In Adam all died. And so it's only one man, one man 
that is going to be our regenerator. It was through his own arm that brought salvation, his own arm. So it is through that one man that we are, we are, we are given that life-giving spirit through his precious blood. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. How be it that was not first, which is spirit, to spiritual, excuse me. I think we lost her again. Yeah, her internet connection is going down. Felicia, you got it? Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and read it. I got my scripture yeah, right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, no problem. So um, I think we're at 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Hello? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, sorry. I just picked up and started reading here. <laughs> oh, okay, no problem. I'll just keep on going. Um, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And that's really just as a metaphor for saying, now he's saying flesh and blood, he's basically saying that's corrupt. See, because he said, now I say this, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh neither or as suppose or or for example like neither can corruption inherit incorruption so that goes back to what the previous speaker was saying see this flesh and blood we 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 the flesh profited nothing it has to go back from whence it came it's natural it's earthly it's fleshly okay but now we have to also remember that we have fleshly principles See, when Yahweh calls us out of the world, that's only the beginning of the operation. The next step is he got to get to uh, pulling that world out of us. Okay, that's very important. I see the five minute bell. Thank you. Now let's get this last scripture where it says, um, verse 51, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible now that's the same as said the dead if they're going to be raised and they're going to be raised incorruptible then they got to be raised from some state because we're not talking about because he's not talking about no dead flesh getting up so that dead has got to right raise from some state and that state is a rest, a sleep, a type of sleep. Quiet as it's kept, we should be moving towards that um, state of rest now. Gathering, we've been gathering, you know, on the sixth day, and we should be resting. And if you look at what's happening out here in the creation, we can see that Yahweh has allowed us to enter into a type of rest where we're not so bogged down with the fleshly things of the world. Because I'm going to tell you, the world is prison. That's the jail. That's what we got to be freed from. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then this last scripture where it says, um, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So I hope that was, that did it a little bit of justice. And I thank you so much Southfield family for the opportunity and I yield the floor, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Whitfield. I'm sorry. Uh, we know you put we put you on the spot. We know this is a big question, and everybody, uh, pretty much all of us, have had or still have. And uh, it's not an easy topic to go into. We wanted to get every, a lot of people in, but we're going to try to give the next speaker a little bit of time as well to go into it. So, and then we'll probably take the last ten minutes for uh, any other questions or comments. So, for our next speaker on this question is Dr. Rhonda Brazil. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is awesome. Just like the previous speaker uh, talked about, and Dr. Um, Leatherberry talked about uh, in Springfield this morning, we were working with the ages and dispensations and left off in Springfield talking about this present kingdom age and where we are going, where we are heading into this fifth age. 
And some, as it says right there in Corinthians, some will be asleep. In other words, they will have departed from this physical earth plane. And the question is, where did they go? Where are they now? If I, if I am understanding that question, and that is my uh, recitation of it in the condensed form, where do we go after we die? Now, I want to clarify the we for a minute. What we are talking about are those that have died in Yahshua the Messiah. That's what I'm going to be dealing with. Um, in particular, because there is somewhere that you already are before you take off the physical. Okay? Just where you have been translated to without seeing death. And that is what's on this chart in the fourth age. You have been translated into the spiritual kingdom on earth. So let's get those three scriptures, Colossians 1.13, Revelations 12.10, and Daniel 2 and 44. And I'm going to be relying on these scriptures that are on the chart. Because I was trying to find one of the scriptures. I have to go to the chart. And look at where the scriptures are to uh, find where it is, because I don't know where it is. But first, we're going to do this spiritual kingdom on earth. This is why, just as the previous speaker talked about, she mentioned this a couple of times. It is very important for you to be conscious of these things. Very important. Of where you are now. Get, get Colossians 1.13. Start up the train of thought, which I think is at 1 and 10. Colossians, Colossians, yeah. Colossians 1 and uh, 9. Okay. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Right. That you might walk worthy <clears throat> of Yahweh unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh. Mm hmm strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, right. giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light, right. who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, all of that was talking about a transition that has been made to us now paul is writing to his brethren the jews that are in Coloss, that are preaching to the gentiles and teaching them the things that yahweh has revealed about his purpose because the promise was that all nations will be blessed in his seed yahshua messiah so he having the jews be the typical people he's working with have them understand the mysteries of Yahweh's purpose. And for seven years, they are being instructed and in growing up in that knowledge so that when Yahweh pours out the spirit with Cornelius to the Gentiles, that's where he started with, with Cornelius, that those Jews who are now versed and understand the mysteries of Yahweh would preach it to the Gentiles. So he's talking about them those of us that have been translated into this kingdom. And could you pick it up just one more verse, go back one more verse, uh, what is it, 12? What he says in 12 and go down to 13 again, I'm sorry. Okay, 12th verse. Mm -hmm. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons and light. That preaching of the gospel has made us meet. Meet means fit. Right. In that, in that scripture. He's made you suitable to be recipients. Go ahead and read on. Mm -hmm. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Right. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now that's where you are in Yahshua the Messiah. Where you've received the knowledge and understanding of the truth. 
you've been made fit to be recipients of the inheritance and you have present tense. Now, I want you to be aware that Paul is talking present tense. He has half, H-A-T-H, the perfect present participle, I think it's called, <laughs> which indicates a present situation that's continual though. Half made us fit and half translated us into the kingdom. You have already, you that are recipients of the truth of Yahshua and the Messiah and have believed it. There's, that's another scripture, Ephesians 1 and 13. I want to get that too. That you have believed that you have already received an earnest of your inheritance, that being the Holy Spirit manifest went in you and that has translated you without seeing physical death, in other words. Mm -hmm. You've already died from those things that are natural, which is what our, our scripture lesson was about which is awesome because in Springfield, we left off talking about being fruitful in the spirit. And that's what Paul's talking about. There was fruit unto death under the law, but now we are married to another, Yahshua the Messiah, that we might bring forth fruit in the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's currently where you are. Um, translated into this kingdom of his dear son. That is a spiritual kingdom. This has happened in your heart and mind. Translated your concepts, your thoughts, your opinions, your philosophies, killed all that and raised a new creature in Yahshua the Messiah. That's happened in your soul, in your inner man. That's where you are now. While you are yet walking around in the earth plane. So get Revelations 12 and 10. Get Ephesians 1 and 13 right quick first. Ephesians 1 and 13. And whom ye also trusted. Back up a little bit. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 9, maybe. Uh, yes, yep. yep. That's Ephesians 1 and 9. Mm -hmm. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, right. according to his good pleasure, right. which he hath purposed in himself. Mm -hmm that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, mm -hmm. he might gather together in one all things in Yahshua, right. both which are in heaven and which are on earth, mm -hmm. even in him, mm -hmm. in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, right. being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Mm -hmm that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Yahshua. Right. And whom ye also trusted mm -hmm. after that ye heard, uh, ye, excuse me, and whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed and with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right. Yeah, right. Yep. Which, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the praise of his glory. Okay. So now that, that set up a series of events that occurred in the spirit when you heard the gospel. Number one, it says you heard. First of all, it says you trusted after that you heard. So you, mm -hmm. had, to hear it first. you had to hear it first. Then you trusted in that. Trusting in what? The gospel that Yahshua was preaching to you by his apostles. By this vision, we were preached the same gospel that the apostles are talking about in the scriptures. We are the ones that are the recipients of that preaching of the gospel. The world has not. So now, after you have heard that gospel and trusted it, you believed. And in that believing, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yahweh granted unto you the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit after you believed what Yahshua was saying. Mm -hmm. And you were sealed with that. That Holy Spirit of promise is your earnest to the redemption. The earnest, and it has a little margin translator. 
it talks about the earnest being a deposit. <laughs> like you put down on a house, an earnest money deposit. And what you are doing is you are holding or you are reserving, if you will, that home to you, to be entrusted to you upon the closing of that transaction. When the closing, the, all the documents are signed, everything, the mortgage is in place, the keys are turned over. But that money you put down was an earnest money deposit. It means that you are, you are definitely interested in purchasing this, this house and you have put forth this deposit saying this house is mine. Mm -hmm. I want it. It doesn't go to anybody else. It's mine. And so that earnest money deposit gets a, a consumed, if you will, subsumed into the mortgage. Anyway, that's just a, an idea in the natural give you about what this Holy Spirit you have received through faith does for your soul. So when you put that earnest money deposit with your house, right? You're expecting to get that house. So when Yahweh is giving you this spirit of promise, he promised it with Abraham, all nations should be blessed. This is the Holy Spirit of promise. He's promising you to have that inheritance in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. okay, so this is what I want to get clear about who us is, who we are, and what we expect, okay, in the next age or after the renting of the flesh. See, there's something that has already been bestowed unto you before you rent the flesh. My dad, Eugene Brazil, used to say it like this. He said, so that taking off the flesh is no different from you than you walking from your living room to your dining room. I used mm -hmm. to wonder why he say these things. You know, <laughs> what in the world? But what he's talking about, that transition, because first of all, when you're walking from your living room to your dining room, you are already in the house. You are just going from one room to the next. What you have in you now that inheritance you have received right now. Mm -hmm. And remember how John was shown two trees on either side of the river? Remember how back there with the children of Israel, the, the children of Israel had an inheritance on this side of the River Jordan? That River Jordan signifies the veil of the flesh in your tabernacle. It's the sixth step, okay? So there's an inheritance you've already received while you are yet in this physical body. Right. So that when you take off the flesh, you are doing nothing from, but transitioning from one state or one room in your house. You're already in the house. Do you remember the Messiah said, in my father's house, there are many mansions, <laughs> man sons in his father's house. And he was that father's house. We are talking about those of us who have died in Yahshua. You have already been crucified. You are dead. And that's, that's, those are some other scriptures I also saw. We die with the Messiah that we might raise with him, it says. Oh, that's another scripture. I have to get that. It's on the other chart. But you have died with the Messiah. What are you talking about? Buried with him. He's writing again to the Jews and instruct to the Gentiles. We, have, we don't have to do anything after the flesh because Yahshua Messiah has been, he's the end of the flesh. You've died from the physical already. You've already died from the physical. That's what the, the scripture lesson was about. And that was so pretty. And I don't want to belabor this part, but this is how you have to lay a foundation to get to your point sometimes, okay? So the scripture lesson was talking about how Paul was in the seventh chapter. He's talking about him under the law, him being carnal minded and dead under sin. And that's why it is so pretty when we look at how King James Version says that there's therefore no condemnation. But the Holy Name Bible says there's therefore now. And I could I might have that transposed. It might it's the other way around. Other way. Okay. So King James Version says. There's therefore now no condemnation. It has that now in there. Because that signifies 
a transition between when you were under the law, that's the seventh chapter, to that transition being made in your heart and mind to being under the law of the spirit. That's the eighth chapter. Now is when that transition has been made. Now it's Pentecost. Once your Pentecost has occurred in you, there's therefore now no condemnation. A.B. Trainer did not put that now in there because he is a Italian Jew. They, don't, they didn't believe the Messiah to have done those things. He didn't think that was important. There's therefore now in this present kingdom age, after you are now dead to the flesh, we don't live at, that's what he says in the eighth chapter. We're no longer living after the flesh. We're living after the spirit of Yahshua and the Messiah. No more physical ways of worship. No more looking at the physical. That's why there's the whole beloved, believe not every spirit. It's not physical. I'm not talk about physical people. You've already died from the flesh. So now that eternal spirit that now resides in you, where does it go when you leave this body? The previous speaker and I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get this right quick. Did we finish Ephesians one and thirteen? Did we get there? We probably didn't get there. Did we finish it? I think we did. Finish. Yeah. Okay. Then somebody get Revelations twelve and ten. Is it? Yes. <laughs> That's Revelation twelve and ten. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, "Now has come salvation and strength, mm -hmm. and the kingdom of our Loa." Right. and the power of his Messiah. Mm -hmm. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, right. which accused them before our Loa day and night. Now that kingdom comes in you when that negative spirit is cast out of you and the Holy Spirit given unto you. You're now translated into that same kingdom. This kingdom was established from the foundation of the world. And Yahshua, who by his death, burial, resurrection, open up the way, the truth, and the life about that kingdom. Now you're being translated into it. So I hope that we can move from this point right here, understanding where you are while you are yet in your physical body. With the knowledge and understanding of Yahshua in you, having received the earnest of your inheritance, the Holy Spirit of promise that you are sealed with. Like you put a seal on that mason jar. There's nothing getting in and ain't nothing getting out. So now when you rent the veil of the flesh, either at the instantaneous revelation or because your role in this earth plane has been served and Yahweh has called you home. He has called you to a state, just as the previous speaker said, of rest. Now I want to get a couple of scriptures to show that. I want to go over there to... Uh, Matthew 17 and 3. And I need to go to the carnal ordices chart, the one that Dr. Leatherberry was using. The carnal ordices chart. Is that it? Um, nope, that's not it. Let me think. Go to the elementary chart. And I want you to focus in on the plate. The death, burial, resurrection, and ascension plate. I want you to focus in on that in that uh, holy place part. Now there's another depiction of this. I don't know where it is. Where those, in the 40 plate. It might be on the 40 plate chart. Yeah, where those sons of Elohim, it says there. See that sons of Elohim part there? Mm -hmm. It's Matthew 27, 52. That's where I had to go to get this. Revelations 1, and I don't know if that's 18 or 10, 18 or 15 or something. You can see that. I think it's 18. But we just called Revelations 12 and 10, didn't we? Yes. Okay, read Revelation 12 and 10 right quick. Revelations 12 and 10. <clears throat> and I heard a loud voice say in heaven, now has come salvation and strength. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm and the kingdom of our Loa, right. and the power of his Messiah. Right. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, mm -hmm. which accused them before our Loa day and night. Right. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb right. and by the word of their testimony. Right. And that's, they, that's the same thing that ushers us into that kingdom. Mm -hmm. The blood of the lamb, they die for our sin 
and to end sin in the flesh and to make an atonement and to set up everlasting righteousness. That's in Daniel, uh, Daniel 9 and 24. Talks about all those things Yahshua's sacrifice accomplished. I want to get Revelation 1 and 18 or 15. Let's start at 15 to um, catch a train of thought. Okay, that's Revelation 1 and 15. Mm -hmm. And his feet likened to fine brass as if they burned in a furnace mm -hmm. and his voice as the sound of many waters. Right. And he had in his right hand seven stars mm -hmm. and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword mm -hmm. and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Mm -hmm. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Mm -hmm. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Right. I am he that liveth and was dead. Uh -huh. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. That same power that Yahshua Messiah has, he liveth and was dead. He was manifest in the physical form. Mm -hmm. And he did and was crucified. Mm -hmm. But he rose from there, which is what this plate is depicting. Get Matthew 27 and 52. He wasn't the only one that rose, though. Matthew 27 and 52. Is that 52? Mm -hmm. Or 62? Matthew's 27 and 52. Mm -hmm. Then said Yahshua unto him, put up again thy sword okay. unto this place. Mm -hmm. That's That's 62. No, 62? It's, it's, I think it's 52. 52 and 52. the graves were opened and many yeah. bodies of the sons which slept arose. All right, that's what I want. Matthew 27, 52. Mm -hmm. She's talking about sleeping. Now, mm -hmm. I actually, you, you can do these things in your uh, Bible.com app, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, slept with. That's what I put in. And it brought up 37 different scriptures. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to um, read the little snippets they have with this. First Kings 2 and 10. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. First Kings eleven twenty one, David And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, what does he talk about slept with his fathers? That means he died. From a physical standpoint, he's died. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh, when he's writing it, he don't write it death. Mm -hmm. He write it that you slept. This is the spirit speaker talk about. Right. <clears throat> Sleep. 1 Kings eleven forty three, and Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. Mm -hmm. 14, 1 Kings 14 and 20, and the days mm -hmm. of Jeroboam reign were two and 20 years, and he slept with his fathers. Mm -hmm. We'll go, go down a little bit. 2 Kings 10 and 35, and Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. You understand? That's what sleep is to Yahweh. 2 Chronicles 33 and 20. So Manasseh slept with his father. Now pick up right there, Matthew 27, 52, what it just said about that. What did it just say? 752. And the graves were opened and right. many bodies of the sons which slept arose. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about physical bodies. Right. right. Oh, we're not talking about physical bodies. Right. Sorry. <laughs> we did not. <laughs> no, we right. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the, the natural man and the natural mind reading that thinks that physical bodies came up right. so the graves that were open as Yahshua Messiah has said they will hear his voice and the mm -hmm. graves will be open and them that slept in the graves shall raise either unto uh, life or unto uh, condemnation he talks about the grades of them being open i'm gonna get that right there keep reading where you are 52nd verse mm -hmm. and the graves were open and many bodies of the sons which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many mm -hmm. now when the satyrian and they that were with him watching Yahshua saw the earthquake and those things that were done. They feared greatly saying, truly this was the son of Yahweh. Right, now they saw that. They saw the <laughs> earthquake and whatnot, but what they saw were visions of those 
that were these ones that I just read to you back in the scriptures, second Kings and first Kings and these ones, okay. your father, the ones that were uh, in Yahshua or in, let's make it very clear. Go over to Hebrews 11, 11, talk about those that died in faith. 11, 13. Uh -huh. Thank you. These all work. died in faith, mm -hmm. not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Now, those that died in faith, those are the ones that I, I read about, the ones that Yahweh used in his purpose unto righteousness. They died in faith in Yahshua Messiah. They didn't receive the promise, but they heard about it. And they died in faith that this Redeemer, Yahshua Messiah, would, lead, would, would come and do what he did to them. When he resurrected Yahshua, those souls of those rose with him and went on into Jerusalem, the holy city, and many saw visions of them. They are now incorporeal, incorporeal bodies. Now, where did they go? I want you to go to um, Revelation 6 and 9. And where mm -hmm. are those that are asleep in Yahshua Messiah? Now, this is talking about the fifth seal. And I remember Dr. Clover Screws going into this before. We, we learn these things because we come to class. We don't learn these things because we're smart. We learn <laughs> these because we come to class. And Yahweh has instructed us about these things before. And we, we go back and we look at these things and, and we, we pass them on as we have learned of Yahweh about these things. So good. This is the fifth seal. Now, the fifth seal, go to your, um, you can stay on this chart, but go over to the pattern plate on this chart and that fifth seal would be likened unto the holy place right the fifth step mm -hmm. it's the entire holy place which represents yashua the fifth step does the lamp stand he said i am the light of the world that bread show bread i am the bread of life your mm -hmm. fathers did eat bread in the wilderness are dead they're dead. They ate physical bread. But he's that spiritual bread from heaven that that physical bread was representing. And when you eat of him, eating of him is partaking of the knowledge and understanding or the gospel of his purpose, his life, his birth, his death, his burial, his resurrection, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that ascension, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that, that you are consuming from a spiritual standpoint. That's the true bread. It lays up in your heart and mind to give you sustenance. That's already happening to you. That's currently happening to you. So you are being given life on this side of the veil of the flesh. And then there's the altar of incense. And that's what this fifth seal is talking about. Read Revelation there, the fifth seal. Revelation 6 and 9. Mm -hmm. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim mm -hmm. and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Yahweh, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Mm -hmm. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season mm -hmm. until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, they were at rest. White rolls were given to them and they were at rest. Remember, these are those under the altar. And why is it being depicted to John under the altar? Because the mm -hmm. altar of incense is Yahshua the Messiah. There's actually a transcript that's titled that. Yahshua the Messiah is the altar of incense. That's who the eternal prayer goes from the from him to the father he's our intercessor so when you take off the flesh with the knowledge of yashua messiah in you dr kenley would say it like this he said those who have understood what i have said and what i'm talking about you will die just that way mm. you are illuminated in your heart and mind you are in the holy place you are have the sustenance of the gospel in your heart and mind 
and the intercessor within you and you and him. That is what Yahshua Messiah prayed in the 17th chapter to the father. And that's what he told them in the 14th chapter of John. 17th chapter and 14th chapter of John. I go away to prepare a place for you so that where I am, he is in the physical body. At that time when he's telling them this, he is in the physical body, but he is the Holy Spirit personifier, Holy Spirit right within his physical body. And he told Nicodemus that no man ascended to heaven except he that came down from heaven, who is the son of man, which is in heaven. Mm. He in heaven while yet in the physical body. So if that's your state before you take off the veil of flesh, that is your state when you take off the veil of flesh. Mm. You are in Yahshua Messiah, in the altar or under the altar as you, you would, at rest in him. Now, are they conscious? When we read there in Revelation, they were conscious. They asked Yahshua, how long before you will avenge our blood? And white rolls were given to them and they were told to rest a little season. So what's happening with them while they are, while they are, let's go over to this scripture, Matthew 17 and one. What's happening with them while they are at rest it's like, you know, you're at rest. Like the previous speaker talked about when you are at rest, you are in a state where your body is dormant, but you are conscious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, you are still having conversations. <laughs> I've had these conversations in my dream. In this dream state is you existing, living, breathing, whatnot, while you are without your body, you're not in you're not in your physical body, or you are you are asleep. Your physical body is not in motion. What I'm saying, your physical body is not being activated, but your mind is conscious. I want you to get John seven. I mean Matthew seventeen and one, mm -hmm. two, three. Matthew seventeen and one. Right. And after six days, Yahshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother and mm -hmm. bringeth them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them mm -hmm. and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light mm -hmm. and behold there appeared unto them moses and elijah talking with him yeah. mm -hmm. that's right thank you dr felicia hamilton mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i know you keep reading but right there <laughs> moses mm -hmm. has appeared with yashua mm -hmm. On the Mount Transfiguration. And Dr. Kelly brought these things out. We are not smart. It is the vision that brought these things to our attention. Yes, yes. When we come to class so that they are brought to our attention. So he says he is shown in the vision, Dr. Kelly talks about, he's shown in the vision that where Moses was told to go up in Mount Nebo and die. And remember, the satanic spirit was disputing with Michael where Moses' body was buried. Because that's all he's about is this physical. Okay, so he's trying to find Moses' body. And Dr. King says so he can use it like he, he uses in the, in the um, Roman Catholic Church, all these dead saints. <laughs> he wanted to claim Moses' body too, you see. Like they tried to claim Peter's body buried under the catacomb, which is false. It's a lie. Peter was never in Rome. I digress. But so Yahshua had taken Moses, you see, into himself. Yahweh had taken him, absorbed him into his body so that he was able to produce Moses over here on the Mount Transfiguration. And Moses and John the Baptist is who this Elijah is. They understood that later when you read down in that scripture. In Matthew 17, he's telling them that Elijah is John the Baptist, or John the Baptist is that Elijah that was to come, the forerunner of the Messiah. So here Moses and John the Baptist are there with Yahshua in the mountain transfiguration. We're not talking about Moses' physical body, of course. We're talking about his soul that has appeared because he died in Yahshua, or he 
He was, he believed in Yahshua Messiah as a set over in Hebrews. They died in faith. Now, I haven't received the promise themselves, but seeing it afar off. Moses certainly was one of those that saw it afar off. He was given that vision on his third trip in the mouth. That's why he came down illuminated because he saw Yahshua and was able to identify them, was able to identify Yahshua right there with them. He called Oshia Yahoshua after that third trip in the mouth because he was able to see that. He saw the promise afar so off. He died in faith and Yahshua was able to produce him. And here it is on this chart. Now here on this Moses chart, it says resurrection. You see the sons of Elohim right there with Yahshua produced with him on the day of um, the, the resurrection. Those that slept arose with him. So they are at rest in Yahshua. He's able to, to bring them back up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's able to make them appear with him. So these ones, Moses and Elijah, were talking with him. So they were, they were conscious. They're talking. They're having a conversation with Yahshua on this Mount Transfiguration. That Peter hears. And that's why Peter says, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, because that's what they're talking about, the tabernacle. And that's what Peter hearing the conversation. They're talking with them. So now, when you die or you leave this physical, thank you, I see the five-minute notice. When you leave this physical, that spirit, that earnest uh, of your inheritance, the Holy Spirit of promise that you are sealed in, and that's sealed in you. That soul with that Holy Spirit is preserved in Yahshua the Messiah, in him. In my father's house are many mansions. Those man's sons are in Yahshua the Messiah. They are able to appear with him and they will appear with him. In fact, that is 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4. I think that's where it is. But we know that at his appearing, we will be like him. That's over there in um, John, 1 John, I think. The third chapter. But I want to get 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not Yahweh, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that Yahweh is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For Yahweh has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Maybe second Thessalonians 4, 4, I'm sorry. Okay, second, uh, there's no 4 of second Thessalonians. Okay. Hello? Oh, yeah, I can't remember what I was reading in Thessalonians or what I had called about that. Okay. You want First uh, Thessalonians 4 and 14? Okay. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, mm -hmm. even so them also which slept in Yahshua will Yahweh bring with him. That's right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Graciela Underwood. Yep. Those that are slept with him, he will bring with him. And over there, it talks about those angels appearing in flaming vengeance, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. And who do you think that is? So they will they will appear with Yahshua the Messiah. You understand? And you who are not sleep, you who are walking around this earth plane, you will, by that very spirit manifesting you, will transition from this life, this physical existence, into that next world. You already having your gift of your inheritance on this side of the river. The spirit of life, the spirit or the law of the spirit of life that operates in you right now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah will be walking from your living room to your dining room, walking from one state in Yahshua Messiah to the next state in Yahshua Messiah, transitioning right into that next state. 
that you are already, you have already received it. So I hope that that sheds some light. And as I was saying in the previously, this is one of the things that I ask of Yahweh to make it clearer and clearer in my own heart and mind what this next age brings for us. It is so magnificent and it is something to look forward to, to really look forward to. And I thank Yahshua Messiah. I'll praise this time if you got anything out of it. Hallelujah. 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 Two hours just as long. I know, I know right? <laughs> um, we had more speakers we wanted to get in. We just didn't have the time. By uh, Yahshua willing, we will continue going with this topic in further classes. Uh, Dakisha, did you can you do it in a minute? Uh, let me see. Okay, the topic was uh, is there, what happens to the body? Um, will we be conscious um, once we take off the flesh? Will we be conscious if we're uh, when we pass along? My um, brother question was, uh, do you know if you're dead once you're dead? And what I've been Tremendously, all speakers was great, but um, what I've learned and been taught, what Joshua has shown me was that, yes, we will be, we will be still alive. Like it was uh, said earlier today that there's the difference between the, the spirit and soul and that we will be at rest um, in the altar, standing in the holy place. You know what I'm saying? We will be at rest in the holy place. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, that uh, again, a point was brought out, Dr. Kenley would say, you know, oh, we got a full class today and it's like 10 people in class. Mm -hmm. I read it or heard it uh, somewhere, I'm not sure, but it's been a long time. So now we have spirits that is walking around that is fully alive and conscious, you know what I'm saying? And aware, but those are demons that wonders and, and seek out bodies to sit in or even without bodies. You know, there are people who are able to discern uh, or see spirit. We have members in class that have testified to that. Um, so my one minute is basically up. So yes, you will be, if you are the body of Yahshua Messiah, if you're righteousness, when we do take off this physical flesh, because it will happen to everyone. Well, you know, majority, I guess, but there will still some still be alive also when Yahshua revealed itself uh, from heaven, you know, uh, taking a vengeance on them that know not him. And, will, and the ones who will not be with the Messiah, they're they're going to be gnashing of teeth, not physically so, but they're not going to know Yahshua. They're going to be so miserable. I'm sorry, I'm taking up so much time, but that's basically how I say, yes, you will be uh, conscious and awaiting for Yahshua. And we're all going to come up at once or be a consuming fire with him when he does mm -hmm. appear, if I can say it like that. I'm sorry I'm rushing, but it is the end of class. And I truly enjoy class so tremendously. They went into a lot and we are still here in this Gregorian, this, this, this date 2001 is, it boggles me that we're still here or that I'm still here. I'm, it don't boggle me. I know it's by the blessing of Yahshua. But anyway, with that, I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Love Barry. And sorry for rushing you like that. No. Um, we thank you everyone for coming. We thank our visitors, Dr. Graciela Underwood, Dr. David Underwood, and Dr. Janine Woodfield. Uh, we hold classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. I'm sorry, from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and on Sundays from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. We will now have Doxology, which is taken from the last two books, last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present your soul faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong all glory, majesty, dominion, and power for all times, now and ever. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.